Hello and welcome to Factoring. Uh, we're still working on Factoring. We're going to work on this left wing here. Uh, when you uh, basically have factored out your common stuff, you count the number of terms and you end up with two terms. If you end up with just two terms, there's two things that could happen. You could have a perfect square or you could have a perfect cube. Now, believe it or not, in this class we've decided, um, in sake of time, uh, not to teach perfect cube factoring. Uh, so you don't actually have to worry about it uh, until 101. If you take Math 101, uh, this will be something that you discuss. Um, but in this class, we're not going to worry about perfect cube factoring. So uh, basically, when you see a two-term polynomial, all you need to do is ask yourself, hey, is this a perfect square, and is it subtraction? Uh, because perfect squares can factor if they are difference only, in other words, subtraction. Uh, let's look at an example here. For example, x squared minus 25. This has two terms, one, two, and uh, we can factor this. If both of the terms are perfect squares, meaning that you can take the square root of them and get an, uh, get an exact number, then therefore uh, you can factor it. So I ask you, so basically we can ask ourselves, hey, what is the square root of x squared? Square root of x squared. In other words, what times what gets me x squared? Well, that's just x. And then we ask, hey, what's the square root of 25? Well, what times what gets me 25? It's just 5. So then all you have to do is write both of these terms twice. So I take the x and I write it here. I take the 5 and I write it here. And I write 1 with a plus and 1 with a minus. That's what this formula right here is telling us uh, to do with difference of squares. Now this only works if it's subtraction. If they give you an addition one, if they gave you x squared plus 25, this does not factor, does not factor. It only factors if you have subtraction. We can always check this, by the way, by simply using the super distribution. x times x is x squared. x times 5 is negative 5x. 5 times x is 5x. And 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. So we get x squared. These middle terms cancel out. Negative 5x plus 5x, that's gone, just leaving us with minus 25. So it does check out, and uh, it's all good. So again, uh, if you have two terms, you're going to ask yourself, are these perfect squares? Uh, if they are, take the square root of each one and write them twice, one with a plus and one with a minus. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, so here's another one. Uh, we're taking a look at this question. Uh, we can follow the rules of factoring. We can say, hey, is there anything that factors out? Anything common? I don't see anything common here. So then we count the number of terms. We have two terms. So I say, hey, two terms. Is this a perfect square with subtraction? Well, 36 is a perfect square. The square root of 36x squared would be 6x. Okay. And 49, square root of 49 is 7. So these are perfect squares, and we do have subtraction, so that's good. So we write two parentheses out. We're going to write 6x, 6x, and 7, 7, 1 with plus, 1 with minus. So uh, that's an example. Uh, let's uh, take a look at this one. What about 2x cubed minus 2x? Okay, so uh, like for example on this one, again, you want to follow all the rules of factoring. Factor out the common stuff. Ooh, is there common stuff here? Ooh, there is. There's a 2 in both of these and an x. So I'm going to pull out 2x. That's the common stuff. When I pull 2x out of this, I'm just left with x squared. And when I pull 2x out of this, I'm just left with 1. So remember, you've got to pull out the common stuff. That's always the first rule of factoring. If you don't pull out that greatest common factor, we're going to have some issues. Okay, cool. Now I say, how many terms do I have? Uh, well, inside the parentheses, I have one term, two terms. Two terms, I ask myself, are these perfect squares? Is x squared a perfect square? You bet, it's just x. And is 1 a perfect square? Yeah, square root of 1 is 1. So I'm going to write 2x. I'm going to write out two sets of parentheses. And I'm going to write these perfect squares down. 1 with plus, 1 with minus. And that would be our answer there on that one. So again... Uh, that's, that's basically all there is to two-term factoring. You're going to ask yourself, is it a perfect square? If it is, factor it down. Let's give you guys a couple problems to try. Okay, so here are four problems for you to do. Take out your video notebook. Go ahead and push the pause button. 
and work through these four problems here. Make sure that you can factor two-term polynomials using all the rules that we've discussed. Okay, good luck. Oh, hey, welcome back. Here we go. We've got x squared minus 100. So first thing I do is factor out all the common stuff. There's no common stuff here, uh, so uh, we can just continue. I count the terms. got two terms. I ask myself, is it subtraction, and are these perfect squares? Yes, yes, yes. So the perfect square of x is just x, and the perfect square of 100, 100 is 10 times 10. So we would write this with two parentheses. We're going to write x, x, 10, 10, 1 with plus, 1 with minus. OK, good. Next one. Are these perfect, uh, any common stuff? There's no common stuff here. Are they perfect squares? Hmm. 4y squared. The square root of 4y squared, 2 times 2, and the, which is be 2y. Okay, that works. Square root of 81, that's a perfect square. It's 9 times 9. Okay, good. And it is subtraction, so we're all right here. And so I would just write out 2y, 2y, 9, and 9, 1 with plus, 1 with minus. Hopefully you're getting to see that pattern. So, uh, number three, any common stuff? Uh, no common stuff. I ask myself, uh, how many terms? Two terms, perfect squares. Are these perfect squares? Square root of 9z squared is 3z. Yeah, square root of 25. What times what gets me 25? 5, good. Ooh, however, however, we've got addition here. You cannot factor perfect squares um, if they are dif uh, addition. You cannot do sums of squares. You can only do difference of squares. So therefore, because this is plus, we would say that this does not factor. So be careful on that. If you see a plus, uh, those do not factor. Okay, number four. Uh, factor out the common stuff. Any common stuff here? It looks like a two. So I'm going to factor out the two. That leaves me with 16x squared minus 25. Okay, I've got two terms. Uh, are they perfect squares? I think, yeah, the square root of 16x squared would be 4x, so that works. Square root of 25 is 5. So I would write out these two factors, 4x, 4x, and this 5 twice, 1 with plus, 1 with minus. Now that one, you may have said, if you said that one does not factor, be careful. That means you failed to apply rule number one, which is to take out the common stuff. You always got to take out the common stuff, because at first glance, you say, hey, 32 and 50, those aren't perfect squares. You can't, they don't have a square root. Uh, and so some people would stop right there and say that this does not factor. But don't forget to take out that two, because when you take out that two, then uh, is when you have those uh, perfect squares. OK, great. Let's uh, move on to the next part. And to show you how this works, let's do something like this. x plus 8 squared. And watch how this comes out. When we square this, remember these two? These is a binomial squared, so you can't just do x squared plus 8 squared. You've got to do x plus 8, x plus 8. That gives you x squared plus 8x plus 8x plus 8 times 8 is 64. Notice how we have a 1 right here and a 64 right there. So when we get x squared plus 16x plus 64, we have perfect squares going on. We have a middle term that's not quite in line. Let's do another one and see how this works. 3x plus uh, 7 squared. If we square this out, we get 3x plus 7, 3x plus 7, 3x times 3x is 9x squared plus 21x plus 21x plus 49. Now this pattern is kind of nice. In this pattern we see that, hey look, there's a perfect square and there's a perfect square. And that these guys are always the exact same. So there's two of those. So this pattern then is 9x squared, so the first one squared. And then this times this, doubled, that's 42x and then that one squared, plus a 49. And it works all the time. See, x times 8 doubled, 16 in the middle. The reason this is beneficial is that you will run across some very large problems, such as 121x squared plus, oh, I don't know, 110x plus 25. Something like that. Now, if you were to see this, problem, based on all the methods that we've done previously, you would be like, ooh, wow, 
121 times 25, and you actually write that big number up. And then you do all the factors, and you figure out how to split the 110 up, and it, it'll be a 55 times a 55, and, and then you break it down like that. If you happen to recognize that this number and this number come from this list. Look, there's a 121 and there's a 25 right there. It is possible that this guy right here is a binomial perfectly squared. So before you go and try the AC method, just give it a try and say, hey, I think it could be an 11x and a plus 5. 11x plus 5. I'm just going to take a shot in the dark and see if this will save me some time and effort. And just double check. The only thing, we know we're going to get the 121x squared, and we know we're going to get the 25. So let's just check 55x, 55x equals 110. We are now done. And you can write it like this if you'd like to. This is the same way. You can write it like that. We'll give you another one. Let's show you how that works on another one. 36x squared minus 84xy plus 49y squared. Now again, if you were to just do the AC method, you would take 36 times 49 and you get something like 1,764, something like that. And then you'd have to break that apart and find all of its factors to see what would add up to 84. Here, if you can identify, hey, that guy, look at that. 49. Hey, look at that right there. That's marvelous. Let's give it a shot. Let's try 6x, 7y, and then this is a minus sign. So if, if it's going to work, it would look like this. And see if that will work. 6x times 6x, yeah, that'll give us that. 6x times negative 7y is negative 42. We'll have two of those. So that'd be a negative 4xy. We're done. It just saved us a ton of work to do that. Now that won't always work, and you do have to double check to make sure that you get this middle term correctly, but if you have a perfect square here and a perfect square here, it is possible and could save you a lot of time if you actually look at this and say, hey, is, is this trinomial a perfect square of a binomial? Give it a shot, that could save you some time. Good luck with that.